good morning, everybody, and welcome back <laughs> to Money in the Law. My FM 101.3. We've been on a little bit of a sabbatical, but we are back. Yes, Once we again. are back. We are back. Jay Marsden from the Marsden Law Group. I'm John Droyan from Main Effort Financial. And, of course, Tom Harmon from the Holliston Hub, Holliston HCAT, uh, making us look as if we are we are as, as like, young as ever. Like when the, like like when the, like the show just, first started. Just graduated, like first started. graduated yep. school. That's right. Yeah. That's right. What school? Who knows? But, yep. Old school. Yep. <laughs> Finishing school. Yep. Finishing so, school. Uh, right. So welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Money in the Law. Money in the Law, of course, is the show that talks about everything that has to do with money and legal things. Love it. Particularly things that when money and legal things kind of overlap. Things when like, they collide. Like your estate planning, your retirement planning, all the things that you know, you, you know you're supposed to do. The little voice in the back of your head says... I really should be thinking about this, but ah, it just seems so much. It's just a big. I, oh, I can't. So, so how heavy, can I eat so that heavy. elephant right now? And so and hard. We help you. So we we're sitting there with the hot sauce, with like some special muscle to get you started. Sharp knives. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and we'll get you right yep. to work. So get you uh, to work. And that's what Money in the Law does. And we've been doing it now for uh, I think it's, it's our seventy fifth year. No, not that long. <laughs> Feels but, like it. But, but, no. <laughs> we look like it. I mean, some of us more than others. And I, I, and I we'll tell some stories. There there will be a little bit of story time in today's Don't episode worry. of Money Always in the Law. Story time. Or so. so anyway, so how are you doing? Doing well, my friend. Doing well. We just muscled through my favorite holiday of the year. Thanksgiving, just oh, that great tough, couple of it's, days. It's a tough holiday. It's, it's tough and it's good, right? Yeah. I, I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's a great, uh, it, it's the. It's what holiday should be. Where, and where is uh, Thanksgiving? At, we uh, we stay local. We stay local. We're down, my sister's down in Bridgewater. Uh, great to see everybody down there hanging out. I hadn't caught up with them in a while. Um, so yeah, it was just a nice, you know, couple of days off and hanging around with family. We didn't really do anything. We just kind of, the kids are home from school like everybody. That's nice. Yeah. Um, so that was fun. My daughter put on her own Friendsgiving, which was always, always exciting. She's got a great crew. Uh, my other daughter was catching up with her besties. So yeah, it was just a great weekend all around. You remember, um, it's funny. You remember like back in the day when Thanksgiving, when we were kids, when we were their age and you'd come home from college at Thanksgiving, oh. I remember it was, I, and I was saying this to my kids, like it was like, I was, it was out of control. It was pre-spring break. Right. It, it was, was like, pr- it was a primer. Everybody, it was, it was primer like, you come just home, get ready. Right? And, I, I, there were times I think I, I think we went out like Thanksgiving night. I like say bye to my parents. Like, yeah. Hey, I'll see you later. I'm Thanks for the go. food. Yeah, yeah, this was really really good. Can we eat a little earlier so yeah. I can? Yeah. yeah you I roll back into class on Monday. You're like, oh god, that was a long weekend. <laughs> right. It felt like you know? spring weekend. Yep. Things went your way. You were flush with the little cash from yeah. mom and dad, and right. you were like, right. This is all. I just yeah. I got a car, the, and now it's the final push to finals, yeah. and then we'll do it all over again because yeah. finals That's week right, turns into that, and then it's like one long gigantic. So that's that's always fun for those yeah. those young kids. The good age. news is, as you can attest to, maybe not so much this year, but as you can attest to, as you get older, that tends to come back around. It, and so you know, it does. I tell you, <laughs> Wednesday afternoon, I am in search of a couple of wingmen. I remember you rolling remember, around on Wednesday. I, yeah, you. I yep. think you were yeah. you were talking when we were talking about doing the show last week. You were like, I just need to time my uh, when I can yes. get started to celebrate right. yep. Thanksgiving. I just yeah. need to get my holiday kickoff timed appropriately yeah. after the show. Yeah, I, was, right. I was I was helping you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So because we didn't tape the show at 10 last Wednesday, you were able to just go ahead and Jump right start at 10. Yeah. Tommy, how about you? Did you have a good Thanksgiving? I had a great time. All right, Tommy, had a good Thanksgiving. Did you, were you at home? Mendon. You were in Mendon. There you go, right you know, there, baby. Right, where, the little why, town of Mendon. Why wouldn't you go to Mendon for sure. Thanksgiving? Yes. I mean, when I think of things, I mean, and in all seriousness. Aside from Plymouth. This, well. For all the obvious reasons. Yeah, but, but uh, right. <laughs> for all the obvious reasons. I mean, Mendon's the next best thing yes, to Plymouth. That's Mendon, right. Mendon is like the landlocked Plymouth. Yeah, yeah. there's no Mendon Rock that I'm aware yeah. of, but I mean, definitely getting over there, you can feel like you can see it all coming together. I will say this, and I don't know why. I cannot explain why this is, but. As you know, I'm particularly fond of this time of year, right? Yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. We've I, talked I, about your obsession. We've with talked. This, yeah. All right. So, and for some reason, and I, I, I cannot tell you why. When I drive, like in the Greater Mendon, Upton, I feel like that is Christmassy to me. Well, it's like the whole place is like a Hallmark movie, right? Like as you're driving around right. and you're like, oh, look, this is where you know whatever. Like pick, pick any Hallmark movie; they're yeah. all the same, right? Whatever, whatever, whatever plot, whatever. There's plot the car line. dealership. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. There's the car dealership. That's where the big dance is going to be, <laughs> and that's where Tom and Susan yeah. had their big fight, and then they made up that's over right. there under the tree and blah, right blah, at that blah, steakhouse. Blah, blah. That's right. That's yeah. right. right. And look, there's the sign to the 
the zoo that's not really in Menden, but that's okay because it's right. cool because there's a zoo close by. Right. There's a zoo. It's gonna be, that's going to be a great scene in the that's movie. A gr- that's, a, that's a great That's analysis. it. That's what it is. That's that what it is. It. And I, I couldn't put my finger on it forever. Yep. I'm, I'm, and I'm driving. I'm like, I'm in Upton. Ooh, this is nice. Oh, yep. Am I in Uxbridge? Yes. This is great. Yep. Look, I'm in Menden. That's yeah. it. Yep. Yep. Oh, wow. You feel yeah. like you're in that movie. You're like, yeah. you're, you're like you're looking for a little fake snow. And you feel like this is going to be It's going to start. It's going to It's almost like Everyone's got sweaters on. Everyone's kind of hanging out. You know, it's an L.O. Bean commercial. It's it's almost like it's almost like Massachusetts version of the North Pole. Yes, right. You know, it's July fifth. Everybody's got sweaters on. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yep. That's right. The chili in Hopedale. Yeah, they're shoveling. You're like, what are they? What is that guy carrying a snow shovel for? It's July. But yes, leaning on it. Yep. He's leaning on it. Waving to you as you drive by. Hey, happy holidays, John. Happy holidays. Happy, happy what? Happy holidays? Like Fourth of July? It's what, what's, it, what's this so guy? A, Why does he get his cap? Why does he get a cap and a fleece jacket? On? Right, right. Tommy and on, on his car, he's got that wreath that's like yeah. like nailed always to the there front. all yeah. year long, just in case. Never browns up, looks green the whole time. Yep, yep. and it's and magical. it's real magic. And yep. it's that's the Christmas magic. That's, that's good the stuff. magic of it. So lucky you, you know. I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, who knew, right? Who would have known? Who would have known? All right, known? so. Uh, so yeah, we've had a little time. So so I've, I've had a little bit of a medical issue, right? So yes. I and and we won't go into any of, the, any of the details, but I do have to tell. I have a shout out. So I I, I had I spent a little time in the hospital. I'm doing okay. I'm you know I'm on the other end. Spent a little time in the hospital, and, and while I was there, I had four separate roommates, <laughs> four different guys. They all begged to leave. Four Please different get me guys. Out of here. And, and and you can only imagine, right? So imagine put, if you're in the hospital. And you're there, right? And then, like, kind of everybody clears out. And then it's just you and the other guy. And you, there's a curtain. So you can't see each other. Yeah. But you know each other's there. You know each other awake. <laughs> right? So you got to talk to him. You, you got to. You, like, yes, do you? But you do. I mean, I know you do. But I, but you will, too. You, 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 I absolutely, <laughs> you, you wouldn't be able to help yourself. It's not like being on an airplane where you know it's going to end. Yeah. You know, you got yeah. a time limit, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and there's yeah. other. It's different. So you're in there. And finally, you're just like, hey. You know, and, and it's what, dude What proper. are you in for? It's, it's exactly right. That's you, you pretend like you're in prison, right? Sure. You're like, hey, what are you in for? What do you what what you do, right? And then you know, hey, yo, and and it's and, and it's great because you know how like men and women like they communicate differently. Like, yeah, women, the, you're women, speaking the bro code. Women engage with it. They yeah. talk to each other. Men are like, you know, it's side. Like, hey, you know, they don't look at each other. Like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, what's up, right? And so the the way the hospital room is set up, it's perfect because there's a curtain there. Yeah. So I don't have to look at you. You don't yeah. have to look at me. So, I, like I said, I had four rooms, all different guy, all and all like very unique and like long, great stories. But I have to give my shout out to my main guy who was there the most. So I'm there, and this guy comes in, and he's older, much older, and and I see him a little bit, you know, through the curtain, and and I hear him talking, and he's he's obviously got some some significant memory issues. So he's like, why am I in here? Why? And he's asking them, you know, see, oh, there's no HIPAA vi- right. rules in the hospital either. Yeah, like, just shouting stuff when the out. Doctor, we know, if you're sharing a room with some yeah. doctor, you may be like, here's what's wrong with you, Mr. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. So keeping the names in, in a sense. So this, this gentleman's in, and he's, he's kind of, but he's very upbeat, right? And he's like, sure. and they're saying, oh, you have an infection. This is this, blah, blah, blah. And they kind of tell him what he's in for, but he still doesn't remember. So I say hi to him, and he's like, oh, hi, how are you? And he goes, how long have you lived here? And I'm like, well, <laughs> three days, <laughs> hopefully not much longer. Right? So we, we kind of have this conversation. Anyway, so the next day, so his, his nephew comes in, and his nephew is an older guy, probably like in his late 60s, and he starts talking to him. So I, I, haven't, I haven't really engaged, but as he's talking to him, the guy says, the guy in the bed, he says, he goes, how old am I? He goes, you're 97 years old. As soon as he said that, I couldn't resist anymore. So at that point, I'm like, I have to engage. I can't miss this. So your first, your first question is, do you have your estate plan done? I'm, <laughs> I was like, natural I was question. Like, do you have an estate plan attorney? I can get yeah. my guy. He'll be down here in 45 minutes. That's right. Yep. <laughs> yep. So I was like, 97? Are you kidding me? Who's 97? So then, you know, so then the guy who's like his nephew kind of gives me the whole backstory of my dear friend. I'm going to say his name. It's a shout out to Mr. Edward Kimball. I shared a, a room with Edward Kimball. For four days. The next thing I find out about Edward Kimball is that, oh, by the way, Edward Kimball, when he was 17. By the way, as a lawyer, is Edward going to be comfortable with you sharing these details before we just dive into yeah, it here? Yeah, he's fine. He's okay. Fine. So, right. because, because this, is a, this is a great, this is a, this is a okay. hero. I'm just a, a heroic a lawyer. Remy has to ask. Go ahead. Yep. So, he says to me, he says, um, uh, he goes, uh, Edward Kimball uh, was uh on a, a torpedo or torpedo man on a destroyer that was guarding the uh, the 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 line of ships that invaded on June sixth, nineteen forty four, in Normandy. 
and he was there. Yeah. And I'm like, and and oh by the way, it's Veterans Day weekend. Oh, that well, I'm, yes, so yes. I'm like, I am spending Veterans Day. Yes, with a war hero, and yep. of course, Mr. Kimball's so he's so like, I wasn't a hero. I wasn't a hero, and I go, okay, everybody in this room who was at D Day, raise your hand. <laughs> That's and right. That's the right. only guy raising his hand was my man Edward Kimball. So yeah. a shout out to a wonderful guy. That's great. And I got to, I got to, and I, like I said, I spent four days, gotten to talk to him. Unfortunately, like sometimes he would forget stuff, so I would have to kind of remind him. But I, got, I did get to the point where he was telling me that him and his wife used to go to Vegas two trips a week. They were, they, they loved going to Vegas. Sure. So by the time you know when he would ask me, hey, where are we at again? You know, we had got to be such good friends. I'm saying, Edward, I think we're in the Bellagio getting ready to go to the, to, to the floors. And he's like, oh, I don't think that's happening. I go, I don't know. I, let's ask. Let's, Look around. Let's, Look around. Let's ring the bell and find yeah. out. Yep. So that was, and that the bell was... you hear is that's actually, that's actually the uh, one-armed bandit going off, and you're winning a pile of money. Okay, I'm going to tell you this. pushing the button. All right, so I'm going to tell you this. So, so I'm in the, you know, on my floor. I'm walking around the floor. And I'm not saying that I was on the older person's floor. Sure. But there were some... There were some things that were hanging from the ceiling, yep. and they were kind of these light up things, and they were like, you know, ding, ding, ding. They look like the, they look like slot machines. I'm like, those got to be there, not by accident, right? And oh I was man, like, wow. I'm like, I think I might be on. I was on, I was on the older, I was on the older side floor. Yeah. And Tommy and I yeah. will be sending some flowers oh. to the nurses station in that special area that <laughs> had to put up with you for Good three or four Lord. days. Oh boy. Good Lord. So right. yeah, so that was my that was my fun story. I got to nice. spend Veterans Day weekend with a true with a true with veteran. A, with a with a, yeah. a, a a veteran from from Normandy. D -Day. Who gets from that? June yes. 6, nineteen forty four. So that yeah. was that was a pretty cool well, we thank you for your service, Ed. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so what do you got today? So I you know here's what I have. We'll we'll take a quick break. I'll tell you what we have and we'll take a quick break we'll come back. But you know, you and I always joke about this as we're doing sort of like prep work for the show during the week. We always joke about it. We always say, you know, we're, we're looking at, like, we, as an as a estate planning attorney, these articles always find me. You know, you're reading something from Kiplinger's or Marketplace or something like that. So these things kind of always find you in social media, right? right? And so, I, you know, part of me is like, you know what, whatever. Right? You know, we, we, you know we, we've been at this a while, and, you know, I'm not saying that we got it all figured out. But, you know, like a lot of that stuff I'll read and just think to myself, yeah, it's, you know, some, some stuff in there. But I always read it to kind of check my math, right? You know, I'm sure you guys do the same thing, right? You know, four, four traps for the unwary in retirement and stuff like that. And so you always kind of like, you know, again, the whole social media landscape is about eyeballs, 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 eyeballs. So I always check these things just to see, like, am I missing something? Is there some, some new breaking, you know. You got to check your math. That's right. There's, there's some new cutting edge thing that I'm not hip to or something like that, you know. So I came across an article and it was, uh, and we can go over it and kind of touch on it because I think it feeds into a lot of the things that we talk about. And it was like seven things that you need to worry about, about your estate planning. And again, I, I say this not to kind of repeat the same old song and dance over and over again, but I say it because every once in a while, it's nice to check your math and see, you know, d d does, does the advice still hold uh, water is the idea. Yeah. So, uh, so I came across. Is it this, still this, relevant? Is it? Yeah, that's right. Is it relevant? And you know, and by the way, are there arguments? You know, against you know, do these things kind of contradict some of the things that we may be suggesting to people? Because we've had a lot of folks come in, you know, and they they've been asking a lot of questions about trust planning and some of the other things that we do. And we said, look, you know, we we've been, you know, we've been we've been given you know advice and guidance for 15 years now, and we, we're, we've been we're, given these gifts that we share with you <laughs> at this time of the year. And so, but you know, but again, we always like to you know make sure that we're make sure we're, we're we're putting the right product out there, if you will. So, so I, what I thought we would do is we would tackle some of these items and make and see uh, if they're still I relevant. I I, you know what I love. Making like I like checking on the relevance of things. Yeah, I do yeah. because you know what? Like you said, there's so much out there, and everybody's got an opinion, and and everybody's trying to like make. Oh, if I say this a little bit differently, then that's going to be interesting. But at the end of the day, you know, you and I know the basics. You sure. and I know the fundamentals, and 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 I'm 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 all open. If someone's got a good idea, someone's can can do something differently. I'm 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 all ears. Well, and that's a good point. And the and one of the ideas is that there's so much availability of information that it's this whole idea of is this it does this, this information even pertain to me yeah. i don't even know and how much is too much information and people try to google r and, and google plan this whole thing all the time and so he said to people look let's just just kind of break it down to its to its to its essence to its basics so i thought we'd uh, we'd go over the, uh, the 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 not myths but these seven points to see if they still fly all right well uh let's uh everybody just 
stay where you're at. If you're top driving, off, top keep off. Going. Top off, grab a little coffee. I mean, is, is there any coffee around? There's no, no coffee. never. Yeah, no, never. It's, I, All right, I so stay where you're at. Box. Don't go away. We're, you're, you are, you are back with money in the law. It's the holiday season. We're back just getting going. I see what you did You're there. just it's getting going. We are back, right? Right in the back of money in the law. <laughs> this holiday season. Don't go away. We will be right back. And we're back. Money in the law. My FM 101.3. Jay Marsden with the Marsden Law Group. John Drohan, Main for Financial. Tom on the bag. We are talking today about estate planning, as always, my favorite topic, other than, <laughs> my, other than myself. And it was uh, what we're talking about are the mistakes that people make when it comes to estate planning. And it, it's, it's, it's an issue around, you know, the things that we try to give advice to people on over time. And then we find these articles that find us and we try to say, you know what, that the articles that are people are looking at and that they're reading, do they still line up with the advice and guidance that we give in the office for clients. We just want to make sure it's right, right? Yeah, is it right? Sure? Yeah, yeah. Is it right? Yeah, right. It's right. So, uh, so number one on the list of the, we're, going, of, we're hitting the list right let's now. Let's hit the list. Let's, let's go. go. The list. Seven. Boom. So, number one, what are the things that people mistake mistakenly do when it comes to their estate plan? And and we have this conversation with clients all the time is they forget to implement their estate plan. What do you mean? I know. Sounds obvious. What do you right? mean? What do you mean implement yeah. your estate? So implement I mean, your estate plan. Once I say plan. once I say I have an estate plan. I, therefore, I, I imply that it's implemented. Well, yeah, there's two things. The you implementation did. has begun. It, it, what, there's, so there's, let it be written. So let it be done. <laughs> it's done, right? We're done. I'm all the great. Yule Brenner. Away. Now he we, said yep. it. Yep. Ramses. Yep. So there's two things you got to worry about. You got to get your estate plan done. So if that's the first thing, right? But when it comes to implementing it, if you've done some trust planning, if you had a conversation around how your assets should be titled. You have to go and do it. And let me tell you what I mean by that. What I mean is, if we fund, if we if we if we draft a trust for somebody, are you going to go fund your trust? Are you going to go to the investment people and say to the investment people, "I did this estate plan. My lawyer set up a trust for me, and I need to fund the trust." And are you going to actually fill out the paperwork funding said trust so that the whole purpose of avoiding probate on your estate plan actually happens? Yeah, trust right? is great. Uh, as long as you got something in it, yeah, right? and and and, you, and and in most plans, when you have a trust, you'll have a you'll have a trust based plan, and you'll have wills that leave everything to the trust for the stuff that you might miss. That's the idea: is the stuff that you forget about. That's usually not a significant portion of your estate. It's you know smaller assets that just kind of stumble around, and you find them and even realize you had them. Yeah, with but me, it's all it's my platinum, the it's platinum stuff, the platinum, platinum that the I gold. Got. The yeah, gold. the gold and yep. platinum that's in the garage floor. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Well, but here's the other thing. The other thing is, and this happens a lot in blended families, right? We'll sit down with families and we'll talk about, uh, you know, the way that we set the estate plan up. And the estate plan in a blended family might look something like we got the house going in one direction, right? Because the house may be an asset that was purchased by a couple to live in after they come together later in life. And they're trying to figure out where does the house go and how does the house pass, you know, does it pass to... To both sides, kids. There's a past to one side's kids. Who bought the house? What money was used to buy the house? So there may be something that needs to be uh, put on a path, right. right? And a lot of time, that's the biggest asset, right? In many it's, cases, yeah. yes, yeah. So that's like a, they, they, that's a. This is like okay, rule number one, we got to figure that out. Well, in many cases, not just the biggest asset, but in a lot of cases, it's the one that people are most concerned about because you got to have a roof over your head, right? So you do. So people get you a little do. squirrely about the idea of. Well, if I if I if I move into this house and I sell my house, and how is this house owned? Do I have the protections that I'm hoping I have so that I have a place to live? And then where does that money go? So your 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 plan around how your house gets handled might be a little more complicated. Now, combined with that might be the idea that you've realigned your assets on the taxable side and the retirement side differently because remember especially in blended family situations yeah. everything may not just be going to all the kids equally because you may have brought different assets to the table yeah. and so if you brought different assets to the table and those assets are supposed to go somewhere then you probably got to go change some beneficiary designations yeah. yeah right and that's like the thing like when as soon as you ha kind of have these blended families then and, and people come in there's always like this well you know, there's the, the the honeymoon. Everything's wonderful. Everything's great. But and that's the time. And I'm sure that I'm sure you do this. Like kind of in your practice is like, okay, let's just what what's the what's the concept behind? Yes. Like, you know, you're coming in with you know a five million dollar retirement account, and you're coming in with you know thirty five thousand dollars in credit card debt. 
What's the yep. what, what's what's what do we want to what's the end state here? I understand right. the end state is you guys are going to live for another 50 years and die at 110 on the front porch. Yep. But with respect to these assets, how do you guys view these right now? Right. That's right. That's yeah. right. And, and the answer in that case there might be, hey, I have a sizable retirement account, but I don't want all my retirement account to go to my spouse. Yeah, I have I want, children, right? Yeah, that's right. I want half of it to go to my spouse. We figured out something for the house. We've got some taxable assets, or they have taxable assets from the house that they sold. So we've kind of figured out, but now we're just going to make sure that everything's parceled out appropriately. Yeah, and, and this is, and it's funny because kind of the way, if, for those of you not watching on TV, the way Jay's moving his hands, it's almost like he's playing like three card Monty or a shell game, which it's not that at all. It's really nothing more than arithmetic and an arithmetic problem. And I tell, I say this to clients. I'm like, look, this is easy to figure out, but we just have to kind of put it all out there and and have everybody see it because right because you may feel differently. Like one person may feel differently. Like that's the house. This is the house I grew up in. Like this this house I. Like, I, I'm far more attached to this house than I am to any of my other assets, Well, right? or my kids are really attached to this yeah. house. Or it's a vacation house, right? Yeah. Like, oh, my kids could care less about the house they grew up in, but we, because now we're, you know, we're later in life, we come together later in life, we love the beach, that's kind of our common thing, that's how we met. So we moved to the Cape, yeah. we moved to the lake, and now this lake house that we bought, or even that I owned, and we've come together in, now the kids have real, they really want the beach house. And it's and you hate to say it this way, but but it's my beach house. And we discussed this mm. that my kids would get the beach house, and you would get a part of my retirement account, and you would get the taxable assets from yeah. the sale of your primary residence. Yeah. And then that way you've got a pool because you know again when you come together later in life like that, you know it's not stepmom, stop stepdad. It's dad's wife, dad's uh, yeah, mom, mom's yeah, husband, yeah. right? Yeah, so, like, especially the grown kids, they don't know. They're not living with them, right? You know, it's, no, it's, they never. They weren't raised sure. by each other. This is just dad's wife and yeah. mom's husband. That's all it is. And so, there's a difference there. And then the other thing is that these types of scenarios, they need some babysitting. We tell all of our blended family clients, your plan is going to need a little more babysitting than most people's plan, which is that hey, don't worry about it. You know, it'll it'll all end up in the same place. No, because if you did a based on what we talked about earlier, if you did a reallocation of assets and, and retirement account distribution percentages, and then you're spending said retirement account, you know, when you set those distributions up, you thought your spouse was going to get, you know, half a million dollars or a million dollars. And now as a percentage of your portfolio, you're ripping through it. That million dollars that they thought they would get goes to nine, goes to eight, goes to seven, yeah. goes to six. And if it's that invested, creates, the market can have effect yep, on it as well. That creates other problems. So, the, so it's it's really a case of the it's implementation by meaning getting it done, but then it's also the implementation of doing the 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 work on the back end to get things set up the way you want to get them set up. I'm so, going to write down get it organized. Get it organized. Get it implemented. Put it in place. Put it yeah. to work. Okay, that's the point. Okay. Uh, so the second mistake that we see that uh, again, you know, we, this was a, a very curious. Let's pull back the curtain and see what uh, what what other folks, <laughs> other folks who aren't me, say about people's estate plan. And guess what? Getting uh, oh, they think they got plenty of time. That's time. number two. Time. I got plenty of time. I'll get around to this. I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. I cannot tell you, and I hate to say it. It pains me to say it, but we have lots of those scenarios where somebody comes in, somebody talks about something. They, they kick the tires. They say, well, I, I probably should get this done. And then they leave. Yep. And they don't they get forget. it done. And then, and, then, and then I'll call them in six months and say, hey, just following up on a meeting we had six months ago. I know at the time you wanted to kind of get this thing wrapped up. Have you made any progress? Hmm. No, we've just been busy and stuff happens yeah. and blah, blah, no one, blah, blah. Because like we said a million, you know, no one wants to do no, this. No, no, it's not like no. this. Hey, let's go do this. You guys want to go to the casino today? No, no. I want to do the estate plan. I'm going to go see a lawyer. That's no, way I would more. way rather do that than go to yeah, that. Probably, go to the probably more expensive, no. too, but I yeah. want to go do that. Let's go see <laughs> exactly. a lawyer. Exactly. Yes, exactly. yes. I'll pay more to do that. Cause yes. Yeah. So nobody, you don't want to do it. Yeah. So you it's, a, you know, it's one of those, I always have time to do it. And look, if, you, if you've had a health event, all of a sudden you say to yourself, hold on, hold on. I thought that I had plenty of time this to get that close stuff to home, done, right? Like, and we see on, it my first day all back. the time. We have tons of stories about things that were going to get done over the weekend. And on Monday morning, we get a phone call and say, you know what? So-and-so didn't come down for breakfast. And so we can't get that stuff done now. And and there might have been, you know, there, again, this might have been something that was, you know, just had to be made a priority. Yeah. And so, again, you know, it's not, it's, it's, what do we tell people? It's never too early, but it might be too late. And that's, that's, true. That's, that's a risk. That's a real risk. So time. So if you're worried about time, if you think you have plenty of time, 
think again, right? You got to get it done. That's legit. That's a that's a legit. Con- so that's a le- so I'm I'm writing this down like that's a sure. legit concern. So one is the implementation. That's right. I, I agree with that, and I agree with that that people think they have more time than they actually yeah. have. Yeah, and and the other thing is, you know, look, it, you know, we can always change it, right? So yes. if the concern is you're going to get it perfect, it's not. You're going to get it perfect. Let's just get it done, right? That you know, don't let uh, don't let the what's it? Don't let perfect be the enemy of the good, or some you know some some. Fancy, uh, I fancy. always thought it was like you know, uh, possession is nine tenths of law. Oh no, Something that's like a different. That. Whatever, yeah, a whole bunch of a whole bunch yeah. on there. Six of but, one, but that's the idea. The, the idea is that, you know, it, it, there's never going to be a right time. It's just got to get it Burn done. Burn in hand. Yep, there's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> right, but just get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. That's that. That's the way to go. Okay. And and, and get it done. And, and you know, a good a good kind of rule of thumb, and we say this in our practice, is look. Like you said, you don't have to go down to like the last marble or the last like stamp in your stamp collection, but the the fundamental stuff, if nothing yeah. more than like if you have young children, the fundamental stuff of like, okay, we need to make sure there's a guardian for your kids. Yes. Like like if something the the highly unlikely event something happens to both of you that your children will have will they will the, the guardian will be the person that you want them to yeah. that you want to have, right? Well, Cuz they're going to get one, right? Well, the, you know, that's a great point. The, the st- don't worry. The state will step in. We tell yep. people all the time. The state has a plan, right? They will step in and we tell people all the time if there's any dysfunction in your family whatsoever and something happens to you the fighting over grandkids is just going to accelerate yeah. and bring that all to a head because people who were never involved in your life all of a sudden decide this is their true up opportunity yeah. to make it right and do the right thing. And in many cases, they're the last people on the planet that you would want to be involved in your kids' lives. You don't want, it's not that you don't want them involved at all. But you don't want you don't them. Want them they don't want day. them steering the ship. No, you don't want them steering the ship. You know, and, and the same thing applies to like the, the you know the older people's estate plans. Yes, it's like they're like we talked about before, like the house. Okay, so if nothing else, let's figure out what the you know the house. It's a blended family. I want the house to go to my to my children, to my biological children. That was the agreement. So if the estate plan like at least accomplishes that, yeah, and and maybe so then maybe that's you know seventy percent of the battle. Then, then that gets done, and you can always come back and adjust it. You can always, and if you're going to Mars and Law, I, the adjustment—I don't think the adjustment costs that much, so long as he doesn't have to spend drink too much whiskey with you. you know, that's, that's a, that's a distinct, a, po- there's distinct a, possibility. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's some kind of like way you can alleviate the cost, and it has to do. But with I mean, but, but let's, I mean, think about what you're talking about. You, that's a great point. What you're talking about is you're talking about retirement accounts, IRAs, 401ks, maybe life insurance, maybe uh, maybe annuities. Those are all going to be on their own path. Right. Yeah. That's just filling out some paperwork to make sure that the that the that the um, that the beneficiary designations are close to what you want. And then what are we talking about? We're talking about maybe a primary residence, and for the most folks, you know, for and maybe a vacation property, right? And you know, again, not I mean, for most, for some. Well, no, but I'm, but I'm but I'm saying, but I mean, yeah. there are other folks out there who have businesses sure. and who own you know commercial property and things like that. But I'm just talking about for most folks, it's a house. It's maybe a vacation property. And vacation property doesn't always mean like a you know waterfront property. It's a camp up in Maine. It's a camp in New Hampshire. Yep. It's something, you know, you own. It's a condo you, it's a at condo. Killington. That's yep. right. It's, yeah. it's something, right? So those things, if you get, and then see, you're going to have some money in the bank. Maybe you have, maybe you have some investment accounts. If, if, you, if we cover those, if we just get those things wrapped up and pointed in the right direction, 90% is good. Yeah. Like we tell people all the time, yeah. if we have to probate your car and that's it, yeah. that's a win. Yeah. If I get to probate your car and a twenty thousand dollar bank account, yeah, I was that's a say, win. I got to probate a hundred thousand dollar bank account. I mean, that I, I, I can. That's easy, yeah. right? That's, yeah. If yeah. I don't have to probate your house, yeah, that that is that is a gift from the heavens, right? Because think about it, right? If a house and you have to sell it, and the and, and oh. all, it, yeah, it's a it's a year long process. And even if, if and even if so, this brings us to number three on the yes. list. Yes, number three on the Tell list. Tommy, number the three on the list. Is, number the three. Now we'll take a break. Number three on the list is set up a trust. Set up a trust. I, I, 95% of the plans that we do are trust-based Why not? plans. And for the reasons that we just talked about five seconds ago, you know, you can avoid a ton of work on the back end from a probate perspective just by figuring out 
real estate. You know who loves a trust? You know who loves a trust? Everybody. This guy right here. Yeah. Everybody does, yes. right? The person who made the trust, the lawyer who oh like set up the trust, the judge who gets handed the trust says, okay, this trust well, says this. That's this the beauty is- of it. The judge never sees it. It's even better. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. You, know, yeah. you know who loves it? The judge who doesn't have to see you in his courtroom, who says, well, I don't have to see those guys because you know why? Because they did the, the planning. Yeah. They set up a trust. I don't even need to see them. Yeah, have a nice case. day, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's banging the gavel. Again, back to what we talked about a minute ago. IRAs, 401ks, those all go where they're supposed to go. If your real estate is in a trust and something happens, it's easy to get rid of it. Huh. Not in a negative way, but it's easy to make the decisions to move it along, to sell the house, to do what you need to do so that you can forget where the money goes. Hmm. This is just about unloading the house, right? So now I'm not worried about a gas bill or an electric bill or a property tax bill or a homeowner's bill or frozen pipes or landscaping, right. maintenance, upkeep, none of that. Once the house goes away, money in a trust is not going to call you at 2 a.m. and say the sump pump isn't working. Yeah. It's not going to be a problem. And all <laughs> you're doing... Trust. Right? Listen, yeah, this is the $560,000 that you got for the house. Yes. Um, could you come down and just count me, please? My feet are wet. Right. That's, feet are that's, wet. The only thing, that's the only thing you're going to get. No, they're just going to say, could you come down and count me? No one's, no one's talked to me. Well, no they're going to say, can you come down and count me? Because we just added some more because rates are finally actually worth something. <laughs> and you just got to pay me. Right, right? Yeah. We have yeah. n- There's new people here. We don't know them. Can you come down and introduce My them to us? My old man used to get those interest calls. Payments. He used to get those calls in his dreams. Can you come down to the bank and count me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's it. I mean, the trust. I mean, again, back to what we just talked about, right? You're going to have retirement monies go into retirement places because of the designations. You're going to have real estate going to wherever it's supposed to go because the trust says where it goes, yeah, right? the trust is. And then you're going to have maybe some investable money, some, t- some cash, some, some taxable money. And if that makes it into the trust, we've covered most of the bases, yeah. right? So what, what, what are we going to get caught up on? Again, maybe a bank account, maybe a CD, maybe something at the credit union that we just forgot about. Okay, fine. Stop that. I mean, it's not insignificant. We're not saying we're not no. blown up, but at the same time, it's not changing the overall glide path of kind of where you wanted your estate Correct. to go. That's right. That's right. And so, and, 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 and we work with clients all the time, and they'll say, well, do I really need to put my house in a trust? And I go, look, people ask me, people say, what's the downside? We're just talking about a revocable trust, right? Yeah. People say, what's the downside of putting my house in a revocable trust? And I scratch my head and I go, I wish I could think of something. I, I, I honestly, I, I rarely can I say this, mm-hmm. and I'll say to people, the only downside of putting your house in the trust is if you, two things. Number one, maybe you're getting an abatement or something like that from the town based on your status as a senior or as a veteran. And so sometimes if it's, if it's, a, if it's a revocable trust, you should be okay. Irrevocable trusts, you might lose the abatement and you got to make a trade off of. Do I want the protection or do I want the abatement? Which one means more? But in the revocable trust world, the only thing really is I just can't wrap my head around this trust concept. It just, I just can't. Yeah, I don't get it. That's right. I'd rather just own my house, right? But if that's not a problem and you got no mortgage and you're, you know, you're, you're 50, 60s moving on, you know, through that stage of the game and you can have a trust, your house in a trust with your mortgage, there's just not a reason not to do that. Because then if something ever happens to you, for a good long time, we all know what's going to happen to the house. It's easy. There's no probate. There's no uh, license to sell. It just makes the whole thing easier. Yep. So trust is for people who Trust are, in the trust. Trust in the trust. Trust in the trust. Right. And uh, we'll you take, want, yeah, take we'll, us out. Take uh, us out. You're doing a great job. I, thanks. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm a little rusty, right? First time back. Uh, so, yeah. So, as we said, trust in the trust. I'm trusting that you're not going to go anywhere because uh, we still got a couple more things we need to cover as far as making sure that these kind of estate planning, uh, these estate planning characteristics are, are legit. And we are making sure that, that uh, we're covering those and make sure that they are actually real. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Money in Law, Jay Mars and John Joanne, Tommy Harmon. Don't go away. And we're back. Money in the Law, My FM, 101.3. Jay Mars with the Mars in Law Group, John Drohan, Mania for Financial, and Tommy on the bag. So what? what? I got to tell you a story. Go ahead, tell me a story. <laughs> I got another story time. So, and it's again, it's it's, it's all about my, you. It's I my, it's I, my I, hospital. I, I, that, right. I, tell, I don't think I told you. So I talked to you on the phone. No, you wouldn't take my calls. I, <laughs> that's so not true. <laughs> that is the well. You know why? And I'll tell you why. For all the right reasons. When somebody's in the hospital, you don't call them. 
You don't call because well, there's no privacy. You can't have a conversation. But you, you you just don't call them because there's always stuff going on, right? Yeah. And, and and my sister, God bless my sister. I love my sister, right? But they, they they're like callers, and they're not. They're like I'm calling, right? So the phone, I'm like I. I can't take this call right now because, you know, yeah. this and that. Someone's right? taking your vitals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's yeah. rolling you I, over. I mean, someone's someone, rolling you the other exactly. way. That's someone right. wants it, like, you know, someone say, hey, can you talk? Like, yep, I'll text and I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. Tech, I'll call you when I get a chance. I, yeah, I don't care the privacy. I'll call you, like, late at night, like, right. one so, in the morning, So that's morning. why you didn't call because you were, you know, right? <laughs> I, I, I and live, you had text. I, I live with somebody in the medical profession. They in your defense, you had texted me. Yes. You had kind of reached out to me. I mean, granted, there was a little bit of humor involved. There was maybe a little bit, like, you know, kind of underwhelming of the... Yeah. Of the actual injury, but that's yeah. okay. It's all right. um, so, but I have to say this. I want to be alarmist. Go ahead. So, so I, I had several procedures, some far worse than others. Like pr- particularly the, when your back hurts and yeah. you have to have an MRI, I don't recommend it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> hey, lay still on your back. I know it hurts a lot, right? So I was getting this other one where I had to get this. I had this other thing in like the in the radio, and it was an easy procedure. So I was telling these the guy at the you know the tech at the the story about the MRI and how it was horrible and how it was this big dude who was like jamming earplugs. He goes, "No music, one hour in the in the MRI." Right? I'm like, what the, right? Yeah. So. This one was like much easier, and and he had good music on. I'm like, you know what? I, I and I'm I'm happier. I'm like I'm not in pain. It's lighter, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, he's got he's got some like you know this like kind of '70s whatever Spotify mix comes on. What song comes on right when they're about to do the procedure? The Great War is Elon. Dun 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 So then I proceeded to tell this guy the whole story of money and loss. So I I was I I meant to relay that to you that that song I heard and I'm like. Oh, I'm like, that's my song. They're yeah. playing our song. Yeah. I called in. I requested it for you. <laughs> you remember so, that back in the day when you could do that? Hi, is hey. this uh, interventional radiology? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, can we play more in Zivon? You have that, right? Yeah. yeah. Hi, this is uh, Jay from <laughs> Charleston. I like to call and recommend a song. I want you to put a song on the radio Jay for money. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Back <laughs> in the day. All right. All right. Um, so I think we're on number four. Yep. Number four. Number four is failing to create a deadline-driven checklist. This goes back to the idea of implementing your estate plan, right? Yeah. So, okay, you did your plan. Now people leave all the time, and then they say, well, what do I do, right? So what we have found, in, and especially in uh, you know, checklist-driven areas like probate and real estate, the clients really like to have a checklist, right? Because one yeah. of the things at the top of the checklist is throw out old documents, right? Yeah. Just get rid of them, right? Because yeah. you don't need them anymore. And they come in all the time with 11 versions of a POA, 15 versions of a will. And we say to somebody, you don't need this. You don't need this. You don't need this. And they'll say, we actually appreciate you getting that, that notebook down so we can actually put it back in the bag, right? It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't take two of us to carry it in here anymore, right? It's in the box. So that's one thing. So again, there's going to be things that you're going to need to do. And, and whether you make the checklist in the meeting talking to the attorney, sometimes the attorneys will have one already ready to go for you. We've actually taken, uh, lately what we've done a lot of is we've diagrammed a lot of stuff out, right? Mm-hmm. We say to people, look, you know, here's your retirement money. Here's your non-retirement money. Here's your IRA. And they'll point to a bunch of arrows love, and a bunch I of boxes and a diagram. bunch of, right? And, you know, back in the day, Like right, this diagram well, right here. Well, clears when everything up. When you're in the financial services industry, they, tr- they, they literally teach you how to write upside down, right? Oh, yes. like, well, let me, let, me show you, let me show you where your yes, premiums are going to go on the insurance yes, side. You, you're that you, guy. Yep, you, yep. Yeah, I mean, you could write left-handed, upside down, backwards. That's right. right. Yep. This is Eyes retire. Closed. Yep, yeah. That's right. This so, is this is put and keep. <laughs> yep. So that's right. So this is money with a purpose. So uh, so so it. that's the so it's checklist driven planning. So that when you leave your attorney's office, because when you're explained when it's being explained to you, you get it. It makes sense. I understand what the power of attorney does. I understand what the healthcare proxy does. But what do I have to do? You we we put your house in a trust. These are the things that you're going to need to do when you get out of here. So if you have homework when you're talking to your attorney, make your own list and follow it. Don't just go to the car and put it away because what's going to happen is I'm going to get a phone call from somebody in the family who says, all those things that you told them to do, they didn't do. Hmm. They didn't. The paperwork is there and it's great. And we'll eventually get there and the paperwork's designed for people who decide not to get it done, but it's easier if we get it done. Right. So design that checklist. I know you guys live and die by them on the investment, on the investment side. They get you there. They do all kinds of crazy well, and, stuff. And the other thing, it's a, it's a great accountability tool, right? And it's accountability to like where you can say, okay, hey, listen, I, I'm looking at my check. You know, you make the call. You say, I'm looking at my checklist, and I have, you know, six of eight things done. The right. la- and and where, where, you know, where are you at? Well, I, I, I've, I've got those other two things done. All right, well, I don't see them. You know, so you, it, it enables you to kind of get to everybody get on the same, you know, 
page for a lot well, of and if you're doing and if you're doing an annual review, you can say to somebody, last time we spoke, you know, we've had a couple of conversations. These are the things that we wanted to see get done. Have you had them done? So there's a little yeah. bit of accountability factor there, right? Shame is a strong motivator, right? So if that's what has to happen, Shame is then, the best. then so be it. Shame then so is the be best. It, right? So, um, Why isn't this microphone working? It's supposed to, supposed to, Tom. That's right. Shame. Tom, Tom shame him in. Yeah. Um, okay, so number five. I think we're on number five. So number five is th that your, your, the problems that, that people find with their estate plan, mistakes that they make, is they leave too many things open to misinterpretation. All right? So you're going to have to, you're yeah, gonna I'm gonna have have to expound on this yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want you to misinterpret it, so I'm going to expound on this. So, so the idea is sometimes we'll have a conversation with a client and we will ask a million questions. And we ask a million questions because we're trying to issue spot things that could come up because somebody who's not the client is going to read these documents, yeah. right? And, and they're going to be looking for some advice and some guidance around what is supposed to happen here. And so, you know, when, when we put these plans together, there are certain portions of the plans. You know, when you do a trust document, when you draft a will, there's a formula to how these things are drafted, right? There, 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 yeah, there's, there's, there, there's some continuity to the way, you know, Article 1 is supposed like to do template, this. That's like a template, That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Article 2 is supposed to do this. Article 3 is supposed to do this. So there are some, 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 some template-y parts you're not, of You're not making the, it up from, you're not making it up from scratch. Everyone's not handcrafted. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. But what is handcrafted is a part that applies to you. Yeah. Applies to you as the client. And so we try to be very, very specific about what people want to do. And we will, you know, we'll tease this out a lot, right? And, and what happens in some cases is, you know, we'll, we'll break it down to its base element language to say that the house is going here. And if there's some, if there's some special privileges that go with the house, you know, we, we want to build those in, right? But, but sometimes you can get a little cute with that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we'll have clients that come in and say, look, you know, I, I want to really, I, I want to get under the hood and I want to start tinkering with these documents. This language troubles me. This language, I don't really quite understand this language. I don't understand this. I don't understand that. And then they start doing stuff, and they want to start, like, you know, yinging and yanging this thing. And they change this, and that affects this, and they change this, and they don't realize that Article 12 is connected to Article 15, and Article 15 connects to Article 21, which all connects back to Article 5. You know, there is a flow to these things. And so when we try to talk with people about this, we say, look, we want it to be crystal clear what's supposed to happen here. And we'll spend, if it needs to be spent... We'll spend a lot of time talking with people about these things to say, look, let's make sure that we're crystal clear well, on what's supposed I mean, to happen. I mean, that's the thing. Think about it. anybody who's read a, you know, even, you know, who's read a legal document, it can be confusing. Oh, yeah. You know, so you read when 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 the client gets their trust, they're going to read it. They're like, huh, uh, you know, they're going to they're going to get lost. in right. it. So like you said, the 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 attorney's job, the, the your your job is to is to say, look, I know what all this, this is, I, th there's going to be a lot of like legalese in here that is going to, you know, that may be, you know, you may not understand or may get convoluted and, and you know, or, or caught up in other things. The bottom line is this, this is what you want to see happen. This trust makes this happen, yes. right? This, this trust enables this, what you exact, and when you, and you had a good point, we say, well, we kind of tease this out. We say, well, what if, you know, you can, you can like maybe, you know, if, if this person was interested in it, or, or, or do you think you want your maybe to have anybody else part of this, or, or whatever, whatever the whatever the possibility is, you guys talk about it, right? And then, and and then you know, and the client says, no, this is what I want. We we use that the terminology all the time. Like, look, when all the dust settles, when everything settles, what do you want to see? Yep. Like, what what do you, what is the picture that you want to see? How do we get there? Yeah. Yep. And that's and that's the picture that this that's the that's the portrait that this trust is going to paint. And 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 the, the more clearer you can do that, then then you know down the road, you know if and when this trust ha has to go into implementation, there's no confusion on it, right. and there's no question, and there's no hey, well, wait a minute, what about you know the, you know all of the kind of the horror stories we talk about when people, well and, when and, money's involved, and, and this is a balancing act. This is a balancing act in the sense that we want to make sure that we are crystal clear on what the purpose of the trust is and what's supposed to happen and where the ultimate trust property, real estate, house, whatever it looks like, where that's supposed to go and how that goes where it goes. But at the same time, we need to build in some flexibility because for some strange reason, we're not going to be able to literally envision 
the future yeah. and what could possibly happen and what things need to be done. And, 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 and we run into this from time to time where, where clients want to, like, they want to, they want to see every possible conceivable permutation of the way life could unfold wrapped up in this document. And we'll try to say to clients, look, I don't know what the zoning bylaws are going to look like yep. on this property in 20 years. I have no clue. And I don't know what climate change could do to impact the ability of somebody who wants to buy this house and affect the property values because it's on the water and now the basement's full of, you know. It's on the water and now it's in the water. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Those types of things. I, you know, I don't know what, you know, what your, what your person who gets this money is going to need to do from an investment perspective. Right. You know, there, there may be reasons that are counterintuitive to what you think should happen for the right reasons that these things are going to happen. So this is a balancing act. Yeah, and, and those kind of things are the, are the things that you guys can talk about. And, 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 and your job is to kind of make them understand, look, okay, I get it. You, you know, Joni lives in the house, all right? She's lived there for the last 20 years. The house is worth a million dollars. My plan is I want Joni to stay in that house, that, and she's going she's gonna to live in that house. I'm going to, you know... You know, Davey, you're going to you're going to get my two million dollar retirement account. Yep. That's so. So you're you're you have that. You have that. And, and we think this is fair. Are you guys OK? Yeah, we're OK. But like you said, something, you know, the, who knows what's going to happen with the value of either of those hey, things. Right? Joni wakes up one day and says, I can't afford a fifteen thousand dollar year tax bill. Or or they may be drawing off this retirement That's account right. to support their retirement. So this two million dollar retirement account turns into a $750,000 retirement account because over time, because they live in market fluctuation and all that. Yeah. Or, or Joni's significantly younger than her husband and gets to live there for the rest of his life. And maybe the house is supposed to go to the kids when Joni's not around. Well, that could be 25 years sure. from now. And the kids are like, really? Like yeah. we're joined at the hip now with Joni for 25 years. I mean, she's nice and all, and that's wonderful, but we don't have any real connection to her. Yeah. But now we're somehow, you know, so again, you're trying to build some of these fail safes in here and they're not always easy easy to build. So you want to make it crystal clear. And what we try to do is talk through those scenarios in a meeting to say, there may be a better way to do this. Right. Maybe the answer is Joni doesn't get, maybe Joni should get the retirement account, yep. right? Because she's going to benefit from it while she's alive. And then when she goes, she gets whatever's left. And then maybe the house should go to the kids. Maybe that makes more sense. Yeah. And then she could figure out her thing on there. So again, you want to try to, you want to try to manage the possibility for any misinterpretation, but you don't want to worry about it, you know, to the point that it's like consuming the plan. You want to make sure you build some flexibility in there. Um, personal property. I love flexibility. People forget all the time about their personal property. Is this right? number, this is six? This is six, I believe. Yeah, okay, that's right. That's there. right. That's personal right. Personal yep. property. That's the stuff in the house, right? That's the stuff in the house. So what do I do with the stuff in the house? Well, there's two things you can do. <laughs> you can give it to somebody. You can literally say, John... I'm, this new invention. I'm, I'm not long for this world, and I want you to have my 12-string guitar. Yeah. Right? That, that's one option, right? That's one option, right? Or, Get that thing or I can write up a letter, right? Personal memo. We talk about it to clients all the time. We write up a personal memo, and the personal memo says, if I'm not around, John gets a 12-string guitar. And that's what? Like stapled to the will, right? Just yeah. stick it in your will. Yeah, you yeah. put it in an envelope. You sign it. You date it. Yeah. I don't need a copy of it. The lawyer doesn't need a copy of it. And it's done that way because that's the stuff that changes all the time, right? Right. I might hear you play the 12-string and say, that's a crime, the way you play that thing. There's no way you're getting that. Absolutely not. Or I'd, you may say... I'd be doing the world I'd, a disservice. Or you may say, you've only been playing for a year and you play beautifully. It's not fair. You're or it might be, me up. Or it might be yep. Crosby-esque. One of the two. One of the two. But, but Somewhere in between. But those... <laughs> and because your personal stuff changes also, right? right? You sell stuff. You get rid of stuff. You lose stuff. You break stuff. So the Some per, things become the, more valuable. The personal... This Honus right. Wagner thing. What should I do with this? Who's this guy? Yeah, this car looks a little beat up. I'll put this back in the plastic. You know, I mean, there's and, and those are the things that people are drawn from a sentimentality perspective, right. right? I mean, you know, if if I if I took you to my house and I showed you the things that I took out of my parents' house, you would laugh because you'd say to yourself, no you, you clearly weren't going for the money, yeah. right? You clearly you clearly and well, I right. you, you choose things that mean something. There's always a sentimentality to it. It's not always about the dough, right? Sure, there's always somebody looking for jewelry, but 
you know, for the most part, you know, most people aren't walking around with the Hope Diamond. Yeah. It's, you know, it's family jewelry for whatever. So ba- no, I, although although your your dad may have thought that his big like Sony hi fi stereo with like the floor to ceiling speakers are worth something. These right? realistic speakers <laughs> from uh, from Radio Shack, yeah, these, they pump out these some things sound. These plugged right into the they ceiling. Pump. A lot yeah. of music went through these things You're over the years. Kidding. Yeah, You're I know. Kidding. I can tell. Harry Look at them. Chapin. Look How at much them. Harry right. Chapin went That's through right. that. That's all right. right. A lot of circle came yeah. out of these things. I got it. Harry loved these speakers. I got these speakers. This amp. So let's bring let's let's bring him down to his family. Bring him down to his family. I mean, this is what happens, right? This is the stuff that. So you, you know, you can do a personal. And, and the reason I say it is because it, it has to matter to you. Like for some people, they could care less. Yeah. Right? Some people say, "Look, nobody wants my junk. Yeah. All I have is junk. Nobody wants it. I don't care what they do with it." When you say that, let me tell you what I don't care what they do with it means. Yeah. It's going in a dumpster. Yeah. That's where it's going. All right. They're, so they're all going to do a pass. They're all going to walk through. Yeah. They might take something to be polite, right? They don't want to walk out, right? They don't. They don't want to insult anybody. They'll take a salt shaker. Sure. They'll take. They'll oh, take I love a, this plate. Oh, yeah. napkin holder. Yeah. I was just looking for another napkin holder the other day. They'll take something, right? But most of it. Most goes of to it. The dumpster. Most of it either gets donated or yep. goes in the dumpster. So if you have stuff, unless you, you're that lady from the ti- from Titanic who kind of hung, on, hung on, on that thing. On, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's the kind of personal property you may want to just you know. Itemize yeah, like, the crown like, jewels. The crown like, jewels. Hang a little more yeah, attention. Yeah, to that's the stuff you go through. Oh, just and, throw it in the water. Yeah. And by the way, if you don't, and if you don't make it known what's supposed to happen with it, it's either going to be rock paper scissors, it's a Yankee swap, or it's, it's going to be someone who's cleaning up, who's then down the dumpster and finds the whole dumpster. Whoa, what's that? That's, yeah. oh, we're, it, yeah. It's over the top of the dumpster. Yeah. It's trash. <laughs> it's trash. Just like the Seinfeld episode. That's was right. it on? Was it above the lid? Was it below that's the rim? Right. That's uh, right. It's, it's trash. Common garbage. That's yeah. right. That's right. That is garbage, my friend. That's right. So. So that's what you're going to. So, per, and by the way, pets are personal items. Pets are personal yeah. property. So you got to figure out where mittens and sneakers are going, right? So you got to figure that out. Um, and the other thing is, you know, people want to do um, gifts or contributions to minors, and they'll put that. They want to put that in the will, right? They yeah. want. I want all the grandkids to get money. He, here's the downside of doing that. Well, the downside of doing that is that becomes a problem at the probate level because yeah. now. The minors are getting money, and the probate court has to get involved. It becomes a real hassle. So, so we, we'd, we'd rather talk that out and figure out okay. some of this stuff is better given away or better done while you're alive. Sure. And you get to see the gift. You and, get to see the smile. And, and you absolutely can give money to minors. Make a mistake about it. Yep. It's just there's a, there's a process to do it. It's not like you can just hand, you know, you can write a check to, you know, or Billy gets written a check from the estate for $10,000. It's got to go somewhere. It's got it's to it's go into a bank account. But if he's under 18, he can't have a no, bank account can't have money, on his can't own. can't have money, can't have securities. Yeah, it, it can be, he can own it through a, a universal transfer to minor act, a UTMA, where, but there, there'll be an adult, a parent most likely, who'll be, yeah. who'll be the custodian of that And don't account. worry, the court will assign another lawyer. And what The only thing that makes things better are more lawyers. So right. You, you don't want that. Everybody says that. You don't want Every, that. Right. And then Christmas the la- party, get more lawyers. More lawyers. Yeah. More lawyers. And then number seven, last one, we kind of wraps this whole thing together. Do not fall victim to your own inaction. Just start the process. You know, we tell all of our clients, look, you want to come in and talk, or prospective clients, you want to come in and talk, let's talk. Most folks walk out the door and say, that was way easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. You made it much easier than I thought it was going to be. You brought a lightness to it. it was, we thought it was going to be this heavy, heavy, heavy. It's not. We understand that. We're sensitive to the issue. We'll have a conversation. We'll try to keep it light. We'll try to keep it you know, upbeat. If there's, a, if, there's a re, if, there, if there's a need for it to get dark, we'll get dark. But, but the goal is not to be dark. The goal is to say, look, this is, this, is a step of, this is a step in the direction of positivity. You are taking control and you're making it easier for loved it's, ones it's work, down the road. It's work, but it's not that hard. No, it's, it's worth not it. that hard. And Trust it's worth me, it. It's not hard. And, and, and kind of just like, you know, the thousand foot, the thousand mile journey begins at the first step. Yep. This isn't a thousand miles. No, no. no. This is like, this is like 5K. Yeah. You no, know? not even. Yeah. Right? Not even a 5K. It's yeah. a 5K on a nice day, too. It's like a June 5K. Yeah, it's a 5K. It's a 5K in yeah. early September. Yeah. Exactly. Even better. Even yeah. better. On the ocean. Yep. Yeah. Right. Breeze. It's cool. Yeah, yep, yeah. it's cool. The, yep. the crowd's gone because all the vacation. So, yeah, yep. it's perfect. It's nice, nice. So, that's it. So don't You can just... walk some of that 5K, too. Yeah, most yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, enjoy it, but don't let it become a problem. We'll walk you through it. A lawyer, your lawyer, your estate planning lawyer, walk you through it. Make it easy. Make it as simple and painless as possible. But at the end of the day, just get it done. I'm sure it'll be way more fun with that lawyer than with you. No way. Yeah. <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> All right. Obviously not. Obviously, Obviously. No All, right. All right. All right. That's it. We're we got to wrap it up. All right. Thanks to Tom for uh, making us look great. 
and uh, putting us on TV because it's always fun to be on TV. Always fun. Thanks to My FM 101.3. Stuff a bus next week, right? Yeah, yeah we go. Get after St- it. Stuff a bus. Come on, bus. Make yeah, a donation. So on Saturday, Let's yeah. that bus. So, so it's this it's this weekend, this Sunday. Stuff a bus. Uh, support the, uh, the 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 world of local, which is My FM 101.3. Uh, and of course, make sure you stay safe in this holiday season. Be you safe. Keep, that's right. All right be right. safe. We're glad we're back. All right. See. Uh, see you next week. I'm Money Law. Jay Mars and Mars Law Group. I'm John Drohan. Have a great weekend, see everybody. everybody. Next week. See you.